Good news. Fusion has just shipped AutoConstrain, the new AI companion for sketching. And I'm going to show you how to use it in this demo. So you can see here we've got a coffee machine. And in this example, we're collaborating with some of our friends looking at the design of this drip tray. And we've got some notes that have come back. So if we go and have a quick look, they've come back and said, hey, there's a clash. We're four millimeters too long. And we want to add some design changes, some radial slots to make it look better and improve drainage. No problem. Let's jump into Fusion. So we've got our drip tray over here. And if we click on this face, we can see that there is indeed a four millimeter clash. So let's jump in and make some changes. We'll start off by adding those radial slots. I've got this hole cut through the middle over here, that feature there. And I'm going to go and edit the sketch that was used to create it. You'll see that the sketch actually isn't constrained fully either. I'm going to eyeball in some slots, and then we're going to use auto constraint as a companion tool to get in there and help us finish up the sketch, adding dimensions and any missing constraints. So I'm going to sort of get these roughly where I want them. And then I'm going to click Auto Constraint. This is going to send my sketch off to our AI server, and it's going to come back with some suggestions. So here it's giving me some suggestions of some nice dimensions. It's generating a second set of results for me as well. And you'll see that the dimensions that have been added are added in this purple color. I can see that the sketch is fully constrained by looking at that lock icon. We've got 28 constraints and eight dimensions added. And if I mouse over that, it also tells me that it specifically added seven additional dimensions to get me fully constrained. I've also got a second result that I can click on over there. We've got some additional tools that we'll look at in the next sketch. So I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to accept the first set of results over here. Now, the best thing about this is that I have a fully constrained sketch and that these are just normal fusion dimensions. So I can go in here and I can parameterize these. I can make things equal and I can make any edits as I would in a normal sketch. But I've just got a nice set of well-defined sketch geometry that works really well that I don't have to worry about anything. There we go. So happy with my sketch. I'm going to go and edit this first feature over here, and I'm going to add those slots back in. And when I'm happy with that, I'm going to pattern them around. So I've added in that design detail. Now we need to go and look at the four millimeter problem. So I'm going to go and edit this first sketch over here. Now, in my timeline, this is the first sketch that defines the entire part. And as designers, I'm sure you've come across this in any other CAD package as well, where you've inherited a part from someone, or maybe you're a little bit lazy up front. And now you have this sketch that's unconstrained, is critical to the design, and needs a very specific parametric edit. This is where Auto Constraint is going to rescue us. We're going to click on Auto Constraint, and it's going to go and automatically dimension this for me. So there's my first result. It's going to generate a second result for me, and I can generate more. And you can keep generating more results so that you get multiple options to have a look at if you need to. Now, in the first result over here, I can see that there's six dimensions, six constraints, and I'm fully constrained. Second result, slightly different. I've got six constraints and nine dimensions, and a third result. Now, there's a few tools we've got that are really helpful. Jump back into the second result over here. I can look at this and go, well, I like the result, but I don't want these two dimensions over here. I'm going to delete those, and I don't want this radius over here. I'm going to delete that. I can ask Auto Constraint to go again, and it'll keep the dimensions that I had before. This time, you'll see it's added in this tangent constraint and this vertical constraint for me. So it's adding constraints instead of dimensions. Again, dimensions are actually dimensional constraints. That looks pretty cool. Let's look at my third result. In here, I can go and say, well, this time, I want to set a datum. And I want my datum to be the top right-hand corner over here. This is going to move my dimensions from that uh, from where they were to the top or to come off of that top right hand datum. So I've now got three results that are really exactly what I want. And I can choose which one I'd like to make my, my parametric change. I'm going to choose the third one over here and say, OK. And now I'm going to go into this dimension and I'm just going to say minus four. And I'm going to finish my sketch. So I've made an exact parametric change to, to geometry that was unconstrained. I'm going to save that, pop back into my top level assembly. And I'm going to run an update. This is going to go and clear my clash. And there you go. My clash is cleared. And we've added in those geometric patterned slots as requested. Nice overview. Love to hear more from you. And hope you enjoy using this tool.